Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders aren't cheering for their new owner tonight. 14 of the ladies are leaving the squad. They say new owner Jerry Jones wants them to bear too much on the sidelines. Mr. Jones did not tell me he wanted the uniform changed. However, I have received pressure from within the front office to add to the cheerleaders uniform during the summer months biking pants and halter tops. It has been suggested to me that there was uh, that there was talk about changing the uniform and possibly in a way to make the uniform a little more uh, uh, whatever you want to call it. That's just not the case. Well, the cheerleaders say that the owner is also asking them to do beer commercials and to socialize with the players. The cheerleaders say they've always had strict rules against such activities. Well, Russ, we had a little trouble getting over to you way over there in the sports section a couple minutes ago, but now here you are live and in person. Here and in person. Mets and uh, Phillies were live and in person at yeah. Shea. Tonight Dykstra. they opened up a three-game series against the Phillies with former Met Lenny Dykstra making his first New York appearance since being traded away last Sunday. Uh, obviously, I want to play well, but, you know, it's going to be fun. I just want to have fun. You know, I want to play baseball again. That's, uh, that's what it's all about, you know, and I started losing that over there a little bit by, by riding so much time, as a player would say. So I'm looking forward to it. And in the game scene right here on Channel 9, it didn't take Lenny very long to get the Phillies started. Here he leads the game off, driving a Bobby Ojeda pitch up the alley in right center, good for a stand-up triple. Lenny then came home on a Dickie Thon home run to make it 2-0 Phillies, but the Met fans didn't even seem to mind the score. However, I'm sure they enjoyed this much more in the eighth inning, facing former Met Roger McDowell. A bouncing single by Dave Magadan into center field sends in Tim Tuffle with an 8-3 Met lead. The final was 9-3 Mets. All right, let's now move on to the Diamond in Kansas City tonight, where the Yanks and Royals were going at it. Bottom of the second inning, 1-0 KC. They look for more. This Frank White single to right, but Jesse Barfield fires a cannon home, and Don Slot just blocks out enough of the plate to nail Matt Winters. Got him by a whisker there. But the next batter, Kurt Stillwell, singles off Dave Island to send home Bob Boone with the 2 0 Royals lead. KC won a 3 0. Mark Gubazar getting the shutout. All right, in Cincinnati today, Major League Baseball and lawyers for Pete Rose went at it again. Is Pete going to be able to block? His scheduled hearing on Monday before Commissioner A. Bartlett Giamatti? We don't know yet. The matter of whether to issue a temporary restraining order in this case must be decided before Monday. Although I would prefer to have more time for consideration, I will announce my decision here in this courtroom on Sunday, June 26th at noon. Like it happens to many of us sometimes, the judge there got his days and his dates mixed up. A decision will be made on Sunday, June 25th, not the 26th. And if the judge rules against Pete Rose, he then will go before Commissioner Giamatti on Monday, June 26th. Got that? All right. Meanwhile, Pete was busy in Atlantic City today. And no, folks, he was not there to gamble. Pete was at a card show signing autographs at $15 a pop. But that was only half as much as the $30... The Yankee Clipper, former Bronx Bomber great Joe DiMaggio, was getting for his John Hancock. And Ted Williams was there, the Boston Red Sox great, and he was getting $25 a pop. I wouldn't pay for, for signatures. It's more fun going out hustling on your own. Trying to get him. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Russ.